Hi everybody and welcome back to another video. I thought I would do something a little different this time around um, because it was my anniversary this week and this weekend I am going to be celebrating with my boyfriend and I want to stay away from social media as much as I possibly can. I know it won't be completely possible but that is what I want to do, that is what I want to attempt. Um, so instead I thought I would pre-record a video and any of these like speed draws or like art related videos that I do will be pre-recorded. It can't be recorded like the day before or soon before I upload, it's just not, it's just not possible. There's so many steps to it. Um, so this week I had asked you what did you guys want to see? and I got a couple of different ideas which I, I really really want to do um, but this one appealed to me the most because I feel like I have a theme going on right now about self-care and finding yourself and like self-love and stuff so I wanted to talk about the importance of self-love um, suggested by I've forgotten who suggested it I will tag them in the Twitter post that I make once I find out and once I review who tagged me like who asked me to make this video. I wanted to talk about self-love because I thought it was a nice way to end the current streak that I've got going with me reclaiming myself and then me um, you know finding purpose and meaning in my life and also being able to love myself. I think that's a good way to end this like little streak that I've I've had going on over the last few videos um, and that's what I wanted to talk about um, and I've loosely um, coordinated this, like loosely, very very loosely scripted this so I will first talk about how I used to be in terms of like my mental health and what I used to do when I was younger and then I will talk about how I've healed and what I do now. Um, so when I was younger and we're talking like in within recent memory so this my behavior had only ended about two or three years ago um so before that essentially before i left religion um i didn't take the best care of myself i was still in school and i really enjoyed my schoolwork i was a bit of a geek a bit of a nerd a bit of a teacher's pet a bit of everything like that um and that's what i enjoyed doing so i everything I did to enjoy myself was like based around that. I would read a lot, I would write a lot, I would like doodle and draw a lot and that was my thing. Like that's what I liked doing. Um, I couldn't really throw myself into many other things uh, but those were the things I enjoyed doing. I'm, a, I'm the oldest child of six children um, so I I mean it's needless to say that I wasn't the one getting all the attention um, I used to help my mum a lot around the house I didn't have a very super close relationship to her actually I always felt like she favored m my brother who is like two or three years younger than me um, and I used to be really close with my dad which we all know that's changed now um, but that was my life when I was younger and obviously I had Islam and that like I feel like some of it helped me like very little of it helped me and a lot of it sort of really exacerbated the things that I had going on like I when I was younger I had really bad depression I didn't know it was depression I just thought like I shouldn't be this sad I was just feeling guilty about every little thing that I did um and it was just the worst time. It was a terrible time. Um, for example, like with the hijab, it just, for me, it just gave me every, every excuse not to take care of myself in a bodily way. Like, um, I didn't really feel like cleaning myself. Like I didn't feel like showering, never felt like putting on some makeup. There was no point of putting on makeup, never felt like taking care of my hair. My hair was always like really oily or really dry never took care of it even though it was so long. I would brush it every day but I wouldn't brush it every morning for example. Sometimes I would literally wear like my pajamas under my uh, abaya, jilbab, all of that. I just like I just thought there was no point because I'm just gonna cover everything anyway no one's gonna see me. Um, I never I never and I never saw that as a bad thing. I saw it as like a convenient thing like oh um, you know the hijab you know it, it allows me 
to not take care of myself because no one's gonna see me um and I didn't realize how like really detrimental that could be um the other thing that sort of exacerbated some of my worst habits was fasting um and I used to fast on and off it wasn't just through Ramadan I used to do like voluntary fasts and stuff but the reason I did that was because I like had severe problems with eating when I was really young I hated eating I used to take hours and hours and hours to eat and my mum would get super annoyed with it but as I got older I was really self-conscious of my weight I still am kind of self-conscious of my weight but I carry it much better now um and fasting would just give me an excuse just not to eat and then when I wasn't fasting I would overeat and it's just the worst pattern to put your body through um so it would really exacerbate my eating problem especially the last few years I spent as a Muslim um where in Ramadan like even eating at iftar and suhoor even if I had like a little bit I would throw it up um and it was involuntary I wasn't voluntarily like putting a finger down my throat and making myself throw up I you know just could not hold any food down I the most I did was like when I wasn't fasting was to just caffeinate to stay awake stay alive you know and eat like little little bits of food little pieces um because I just couldn't I couldn't keep it down and it was again something that I thought oh you know this just allows me to fast more um for example in my last few years of school I was about this is like between 16 and 18 my last few years of school I didn't even bring lunch to school because I didn't feel like eating ever um and by that time my mom had a lot of things going on so she she wasn't like keeping tabs on me but there were times where she was like why don't you ever like eat like why don't you ever eat like the only time you eat when I see you eating is when you come home um and that was more to put her mind to rest than me to eat really because she would like really be hounding me to eat um so those were things that really exacerbated some of the things that I had going on with me um I'm realizing now that maybe I should have put a trigger warning um but the last and final thing that exacerbated my mental health issues was prayer um and a lot of people view prayer as like this thing that you know gives you peace and it like f refreshes your mind and all of that for me prayer did do that to an extent like in the short term it gave me a peace of mind because there was this chance that God was going to forgive me for you know the tiny little mistakes I did on a daily basis um like listening to some music between shows on the Islam channel um but in the long term what prayer sort of led me to do was just panic over every little thing um and feel really guilty for every little thing like if I saw a boy that I liked and I found him attractive and I had had I had to go home and ask forgiveness for that immediately if I disobeyed my parents I would own up to them and then you know again ask for forgiveness from God um you know it it really exacerbated and it's it was I, I've covered it in a video where I've talked about my guilt and those and the things that I talk about in terms of my guilt there are much graver than the things that I used to feel guilty for that I no longer feel as guilty for I still feel a little guilty because there's like the little Salafi voice in my head that goes you shouldn't be doing this but I, I you know I'm I'm not paying attention to that as much as I used to um so was very difficult it was just very difficult to sort of escape the mental pressure of religion while I had those like it was very difficult to love myself while I had religion because I wasn't taking care of myself in like a hygienic sense and I've I've come to realize that I shouldn't really be embarrassed about it because it was a part of my life and I'm certainly taking care of myself a lot more now um but uh, I it it like it like put me in a position where it just made me not care about how I was or how I should be um it just made me feel like you know a piece of shit sinner human who you know should just be praying and worshiping all the time um for example even with like something 
as simple as prayer, even with something as simple as prayer, it would just keep me up. Like sometimes I wouldn't be able to sleep and I would use it as an excuse to go and pray and then feel guilty, you know? It, it was just a constant feeling of beating myself up over little, tiny, tiny little things. Tiny, tiny, like unmeasurable, petty for God to think that they're like sins. And I, I haven't felt so relieved to be away from that. Because since re leaving religion, one of the first things that I put myself through, well, I talked about self-reclamation. The first thing I did to reclaim my body and something I did for my body was to cut my hair because it was just weighing on me at that point. Like I hated it, hated taking care of it, hated everything about it. So I cut it all off. And that was the first way, that was like the first step into self-care and self-love. I still didn't really love myself, but I, you know, it was, it was a, it was a sign for me. Like it was time for me to just be like, fuck it. You know, my body, I'm going to cut my hair. Um, the next thing I did before I left religion actually was to deny proposals, which I had never done before because I always saw proposals as a way of escaping my family. Um, even though I'd never say that, um, in my head, it definitely was like an escape route for me because then I could leave my terrible family and then join someone else's terrible family. But the first, that, that was the thing I did. Like I, I started putting my priorities together and I was like, if I'm looking after my siblings, because that is something I did after my mother passed away, if I'm looking after my siblings and there's four minors that I have to look after, I'm not going to get married. I am not in no position to be married or around another human being um you know i certainly cannot take care of another human being and in as my culture would dictate his mother so i can't um so that was something else that was i, I think it was the process or the stepping stones to self-love was i started denying and refusing these proposals even though it had really severe consequences for me like cutting ties with family members because they were just so angry with me because now the people on that side um who were proposing to me were now had a grudge against you know those family members who had set me up with them um so i i started caring about myself rather than people's opinion of me um and I think the next step from there probably was leaving my dad's house, like taking the initiative to report him for all the heinous crimes that he committed while he was my father. Um, like every single thing that I have, like he has ever done, I have told the, like I just straight up told the police and I feel like it was a another stepping stone. And then from there it was leaving religion and then from there it was, you know, getting a place for myself and having that peace of mind. Actually, I guess like a step would also be like getting into romantic relationships. But the first one, and I will make a whole other video for that. The first romantic relationship that I had was just extremely toxic. Um, and I've spoken about it a little bit in a video I did about narcissists, but that I, I feel like that specific relationship has like needs its own video. Um, like just to explain it but it was really toxic and I just basically found a, a guy who was so much like my father that I just got immediately attached to him um so that wasn't very good that was like a step back but it also led me to seek professional help because all of it was just becoming so overwhelming like I was living a double life with my family while I was not a Muslim and also I had this really toxic relationship um that was really stressful um and you know people different people were telling me different things I was very confused I was very emotional I was still carrying a lot of baggage from you know my previous home with my father and my family and my mom and all the kids and I still carry a lot of baggage but it was significantly more back then so that toxic relationship, having that actually just sort of led me into going into therapy. Um, so I had three different instances um, of therapy. I did counselling twice and it didn't really work, um, mainly because the first time I went into counselling, um, I just was not ready to open up. I was not ready to be honest. Um, so I ended up lying a lot and it just wasn't helpful. 
Um, the second time I went into counselling, it got cut short because I moved boroughs and they couldn't cover it anymore. They told me to reseek therapy, which I didn't do for like six months. And then I just had like a bit of a mental breakdown. And I was like, you know what? I need help. Um, and I was telling Mimsy this when I met up with her is that I literally went into the GP's office and I was like, I need to see a psychiatrist. Like I am out of control. And he was like, you're not that bad. Um, and he sent me to CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy. And that really, really helped with a lot of stuff, like just a lot of stuff. And it was truly an experience like that was truly the biggest step I took in taking care of myself was going to CBT and just sort of realizing my self-worth it got me out of that toxic relationship it got me to stop worrying about like how my family thought of me um at least for the most part it got me to start truly taking care of myself and taking steps to not be worried about silly little things and feel guilty about silly little things um and I guess the last step, the last biggest step was to throw myself into my hobbies and things that I enjoyed doing and finding my niche, which I kind of discussed in my self-reclamation video, but that came through volunteering with different organizations and discovering what I liked, what I didn't like, what I was good at, what I wasn't good at, you know, improving on the things that I wasn't good at or, you know, just accepting them because they were never going to change. Like, for example, I will never be good at... I don't know I'll, I'll for example I will never get on with someone who doesn't like dogs because I love dogs I love talking about dogs I love being around dogs you know I, I can't sp I, I definitely won't like them in the same way that I like someone who likes dogs um, it's something that I simply can't change about myself and I know it's not going to change um, but other things like confrontation I've gotten much better with like I, I can handle it much better I don't just choke um, and, you know, just being able to talk to people, which, you know, boosting my confidence and things like that, which I did not have. I did not have like five to ten years ago, just non-existent. Um, so I and the hobbies that I had, like with writing, which I've kind of fallen back on, but I intend to get back into it and with drawing, which you can see in this video. Um, I've kind of thrown myself back into it and I love doing it. Drawing was another thing I always felt guilty, like I always felt guilty about doodling because it's haram to draw people and animals in Islam. Um, so I always used to feel bad about it and now I couldn't be more grateful that I'm just free of that guilt. That guilt that, no, you know, nobody's going to be, you know, having a massive fit, you know, at the end of my life that I drew a couple of cartoon characters. Um, so yeah, those, that would be my summary is that the first few things that I did was reclaim myself. I reclaimed my mind, I reclaimed my body, and then it led into me seeking professional help and, you know, putting my mind back in order. Like it's one thing to reclaim your mind, but it's another thing to truly like put everything back in order deal with your issues deal with your you know your eating habits your sleeping patterns your your bodily self-care like it's so important i did not realize how important it was to just like truly just have a moment for yourself like put on some makeup feel happy just view yourself as a normal person who is beautiful in their own fucking way um and then the last thing that really sort of sealed me loving myself was throw myself into things I was good at and, you know, slowly work on things that I didn't think I was very good at. Improve, improve my skills in, in both. It was something of a life-changing thing. And it's one of the reasons why I will always say that if I could go back in the past and I wouldn't change anything because every single step that I've made, every single step that I've made has made me you know has got me to where I am um so yeah that is my video for today I know it wasn't a particularly long one as they usually are but I hope you enjoyed it anyway and I hope to see you in the next video um thank you for joining me and thank you for your love and support and I will see you in the next one goodbye